make it so that I can easily uh, remove the trash can. 29 gallon, I know that's an odd number, brute trash can. Well, here it is mounted with all of the bolts. Hi everybody. Well, today um, I'm going to do something that is really not simple, but um, is a little bit different with one of these. That's a Harbor Freight dust collector, which I know many people have because the price is right. And sure enough, after waiting forever, they finally dropped the price about 30%, so I jumped on one. Now, I've got a dust collector now, and it's not in the shop. Um, I'll show you where it is. Part of my shop, the planer and the router table and my jointer are plumbed with gates to this T that goes down into the floor. Now, the reason I have it going down into the floor is because I wanted to avoid a bunch of other stuff. Um, the uh, dust collector has a five micron bag, which uh, puts dust in the air. You know, you're supposed to get the pleated filters to keep it cleaner. Um, so I didn't want that up in the shop anymore. And um, the noise, they're really quite loud. Um, so by putting it downstairs right below that pipe, the dust doesn't stay in the air. It's in the garage, which is a two car garage down below here. And um, at the same time, um, not only does the dust stay down there, but most of the noise does too. As a matter of fact, when I turn it on, um, you know, I have to listen for a second to make sure that it's running. So the goal today is to assemble um, this Harbor Freight collector, and I will also be putting it downstairs in the garage. So no pleated filters, um, no separate gathering container with a centrifugal um, uh, addition to it or a Thane separator. Um, but I do want to make it easier to empty because the Harbor Freight dust collector has the plastic bag you mount underneath and, and um, taking it off and, and emptying it and putting it back on and having to buy new ones when it wears out um, I, I really don't want to have to deal with. Um, so I am going to be taking and using some stuff I have right around the shop and modifying it so that it's a little easier to do. The goals I have here is to get a barrel instead of a bag and make it easy to connect and disconnect to go empty. And then the other one is to relocate the impeller for greater efficiency and then just to try to actually make this all work. What I'll be using is this 29 gallon, I know that's an odd number, brute trash can. Um, a 55 gallon trash can, which I would have liked, um, a, a drum is too big to fit in here. I would have to modify the dust collector quite a bit. And um, I had a, a um, handle on a 30 gallon drum, which would have been great, um, but it fell through um, on uh, Facebook Marketplace. So I happen to have this brute trash can that's really not doing much because I have all kinds of trash cans. And um, it's just about the right shape to fit on here. And it has this lip on it, which I'll be able to use uh, to assist me in adding it to the dust collector itself. So. This isn't a, um, a big build. Um, I have to think it through as I go along. But the goal is to mount this downstairs, which is not the problem, and then make it so that I can easily uh, remove the trash can um, to bring it across the street to dump the sawdust out of it. I need two pieces of plywood, 21 and a half inches square to make the two pieces to join the barrel to the collector. Yes, this is some old scrap plywood, but I'm not going to go buy some new stuff just for this. It's a dust collector. It's going downstairs. 
I'm just finding the center so I can uh, have a center point to cut a section of the middle out in a circle. I have a carpenter's compass to mark that circle. I had to do it three times before I got it right. Just adding a couple of screws to the plywood so I can hook them together and cut both circles out at the same time. A router would be the best way to do this, but by the time um, I got it all attached to the jig, um, I can get it done this way. I need to make some angle brackets to attach the plywood to the dust collector housing. I'm just going to use these uh, pieces of metal and cut them six inches. One advantage of foregoing a pretty shop for a functional one is you can do things like screwing things right to the bench to hold them down while you work on them. I'll need to drill two holes to match the um, ones in the dust collector housing and then one on the short edge to uh, screw to the plywood. These small pieces of wood will let the braces that hold the housing up from the base of the dust collector expand outward to give a little more room for the unit that I'm making. Well, here it is mounted with all of the bolts. I spared you all of the nut tightening because it wasn't easy. It was tight quarters on the back side of this barrel, but um, it's sealed with silicon and um, it's bolted on. I'm mounting the brackets to the collector and remember the standoffs uh, are because I need a wider spacing for the uh, plywood part that uh, mounts the uh, barrel to the collector marking the holes on the bracket so I can drill them and connect to the plywood. Okay, one problem I have here is I have the three sides anchored down, but this one has a gap. Well, this is mounted all on here now on all four sides. This will be mounted directly to the, to the supports on the, on the dust blower. And it will act as a drawer for the barrel to slide into once I've made that. Another thing I've done is put a bead of silicone along the inside edge and let it ooze out and then finish it off on the outside to seal it against this plywood. Well, here's the unit sitting on top of each other. This will be mounted on the uh, stand for the um, dust collector over there. And I am going to devise a way so that when the barrel is inserted under here, it will squeeze together and make, make a pretty good seal. 
Um, I'm going to let this dry because in order to mount it on the dust collector, I have to pull these out and that will uh, loosen the, uh, the uh, plywood from the unit. So I'm going to let the silicon dry before I do that. So I may not deal with that until tomorrow. But I do have another issue I need to take care of. Courtesy of Harbor Freight, I think I received a pretty good dust collector, at least something that's going to work really good for my needs. But I also received this. This is the cowling that goes onto the, um, the uh, motor and then connects to the four inch pipe. But it came with a piece torn out of it and it's cracked all the way down to here. So what I've got to do is somehow repair this because if I ask for a new part, I'm either gonna have to send the whole thing back, which I don't want to because I've already modified it. And, uh, or I'll have to wait for a part, which could come anytime. So I'm going to try to repair this. I probably could use it as is since the, the, um, uh, four inch, uh, flexible tube will go over this, but I'd really like to repair it, particularly since it's cracked right in there and there's some give to it. <sighs> Options. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. I've got a piece of duct tape around here going over the hole and I've curled the edge of it up a little bit. And I'm gonna use an awful lot of it. This stuff's expensive, but I do have some UV resin that if anybody's watched me make baits, um, I use to, to coat them. And really it's, it's just like epoxy except UV light cures it instead of waiting for a chemical reaction. So, let's fill this void. On the inside, I wanna fill it good, but if it overfills a little bit, it won't matter that much. And with a little luck, It'll cure in the right place, and um, I'll have a plastic sort of coating that'll hold, I hope, and I'll be careful with it just the same. gasket that will seal between the two pieces of plywood. Now I was going to hot glue this on because I wasn't so sure about the gasket glue, but it seems to be pretty sticky. So Now I've got to enlarge the hole on the bottom piece because I am going to be putting these threaded inserts in there. That's what they look like. Now a screw like this will go through the other piece of plywood and then screw into this and pull these together and I'm going to put a knob on this to make it easier. Now to put the other ones in. Well remember this and the repair with the UV resin? It came out pretty good. It feels pretty solid. Almost looks like the original.
I've been making knobs like this for a long time and they have yet to fail me. A bottle cap, a puddle of hot glue. You set it in, make sure it's straight and let it dry. The last step is to rotate it slowly and fill the rest of the cap with hot glue. Once it's dry, it just never comes apart and you can twist it and it stays really good. A washer and a nut to raise it off the plywood a little bit and give you a better grip. I need to cut a one inch wide groove in these side rails. I could do it on a router table, but this actually goes faster. This is sort of like a crude drawer slide and I put a one eighth inch spacer in it so that when it does slide, it won't bind. Odd that this hose is 4.92 inches in diameter. I've seen four and six, but never five. These band clamps are a pain. That's why I was trying to avoid it with plastic bag at the bottom. <laughs> Well, I gotta say this worked out pretty good. Um, once I squeezed these knobs and brought it up near the gasket, I didn't get any leaks. There was some without it though, but it's dropped down, but I squeezed it tight, no leaks. Um, one thing I wanted to do was I wanted to mount the motor up here and then put a very short pipe here. And that was my plan all along to make it a little bit more efficient, but, um, when I held it up here, the brackets that, that I would have had to screw the motor to would have been way off the base out here. So I would have had to really modify this base and that was just not good. Plus the fact that this motor and unit is much heavier than I thought. And as a result, it would have made it a little top heavy. I don't think it would have been a big problem, but boy, that, that that's that's quite heavy so I didn't do that um, all made with scrap wood it's not pretty it's going down in the garage I'll only go down and see it when I go to empty the barrel the barrel slides out really good um, I had two holes on the front with this supposed to be a hand line here and um, I've taken put and put some silicon um, on them. I was going to put some tape on the inside from the other side, but once the silicon's dry, it's pretty tough stuff. So that should be okay. Checked all over. There are no leaks. Um, so I think this is going to be good the way it is. Now, I know everyone has an opinion, so I'd like to address a few of those first. Um, what is this going to be used for? Solely for my saw stop table saw. I have a cabinet saw that's a saw stop. <clears throat> I've never had any dust collection on it. I tried to get something going over the ceiling over to my one horsepower dust collector, which is also downstairs. It wouldn't pull, it wouldn't draw. So I've been opening up the side of the saw and scooping stuff out with a, uh, a dust pan. And um, I would like to have a dust collector, if nothing more than just to keep the inside of the saw cleaner. There's a lot of gears and stuff in there. Um, there's a complete video on how to 
how to go through and take all the little compartments off and grease properly. And I've done that once already. Um, but I think that if I get some good dust collection, I can avoid that uh, doing that very often. Okay, and again, people are gonna say, oh, you need to put a wind filter on that. This is a five micron filter, you need a one micron. I don't, because I am going to put this in the garage. It will not be where I am. So there is no dust that's gonna, well, there's gonna be dust that's gonna come through this bag, but it'll be nowhere where there are people. And yes, I know that there is an impeller for this um, made by Rikon and a much less expensive one that's basically the same thing made by Wen um, that I can put in this. The impeller in here is smaller than the chamber and therefore it doesn't really give as much efficiency as it probably could. The um, replacement impeller that does fit in here and isn't too hard to put in um, fills the chamber better and it increases the airflow by a lot from what I understand and a lot of people have done it. So if I don't need to do it, I'm not going to. It's going to be connected to one tool and um, if it works to find the way it is, there's no point in, um, in going through that and in going through the expense. I will tell you though that if you look up the when one, it's a fraction of the cost of the Rikon should you decide to do it. And if I do it, that's the one I'll be putting in. And as far as installing this is concerned, well, over in that corner, which is out of the way and behind my table saw, um, I'm going to put a piece of uh, PVC pipe. It's actually the saw pipe, the green stuff, because it's cheaper and it works just as fine. Um, I'm going to put that through the floor, through, through the four inch hole, and I'm going to put a T at the top. and one will go for the um, for the saw, and the part of the T that's sticking up, I'm going to cap off for now because I might want to add it to something else, particularly some smaller tools for sanding and so forth. It'll be right in the right place should I decide to do that. Um, and I can put a gate on the saw to uh, make sure that the um, airflow goes well. I could also use that to put a um, dust collector um, hose on the blade where the guard is. Um, I that's another ball game altogether, but that's a project for another day. But I've been thinking about it. It's in the back of my mind. Downstairs, as the pipe comes down through the ceiling, then I will use a four inch flexible pipe to go down to uh, the place where it connects off to the molar down here. But I won't be doing any of that for quite a while because it is really cold. It's a warmer day today, but it's, we've got some really cold weather. And even though we're heated up here, it's cold downstairs. So this will stay up here in the shop for a few more weeks, maybe several more weeks, I'm not sure. And then eventually I'll haul it downstairs and do the plumbing for this thing. And I know one thing everyone's going to say, because I get it so much. For a very long time, I had my little Delta dust collector, which is made like this, but it's smaller. It's only one horsepower. Everything about it is smaller. And I had it up here. And of course the place got dusty. Um, and, uh, I wanted to put it down in the garage, but every time I brought it up, uh, with anyone on any of the, uh, woodworking forums or Facebook, they said, you're going to suck all your heat downstairs and you're going to make negative pressure in the room and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it made sense. Um, but eventually I did put it downstairs and I found out that it didn't seem to make any difference. First of all, unless I was doing a long planing session with a lot of wood, um, I really didn't have the dust collector on that much. I mean, you turn it on, use a tool, then you work with the wood, then you make another cut and you turn it on and so forth. So it wasn't that much of a problem. And I have a monitor heater, which uses K1. It's a vented outdoor heater. And the heater is made to uh, heat a 1200 square foot home I actually have a newer model of the uh, same type of unit in the house, and that's what heats our house. Um, and uh, this model, um, 12, 1,200 square foot, but this shop is a little over 600 square feet. So I can be, in below freezing weather, I can be turning it on to working in my shirt sleeves in about 20 minutes. Um, it uses a K1, which is kerosene, and it, uh, it's extremely efficient. 
I can heat this whole shop for the time that I'm out here uh, for anywhere from uh, five to 10 gallons uh, of K1 a year, depending on, on how much I'm out here and how cold it is. Um, and even if it costs me $5 more for the year, to be able to put these dust collectors downstairs where it's where they're quieter and where the dust isn't in the air is really worth it to me. This shop is also very well insulated. I mean, this is Maine. We insulate stuff. It's like par for the course when you make something. So I want to thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, if you will. Particularly liking, it helps move the, um, the algorithms for you to move it towards the top if someone's searching for this. Um, and uh, if you uh, get one of these, um, from what I understand, they're pretty good. I can't speak to their longevity or even the use yet, but uh, it seems like a pretty good unit for the money. And if you can get the 30% uh, off sale coupon, which they have occasionally, um, it's really a cost-effective form of dust collection. Mm -hmm.